Right, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Stuart Austin ahead of an absolutely massive octagon show in Newcastle. And it must be difficult timing, Stuart, because we've just had Christmas. You'll have had to train all the way through that ahead of this big show. Tell me about Christmas Day. How was it? Were you having to handle your diet? Were you having to stay off the pigs and blankets? Because I know you're in the festive spirit because I saw your Christmas jumper on Instagram. Um, uh, no, I was actually not too bad because um, I'm a heavyweight. So uh, my weight isn't too much of an issue. Um, I do have to stay under uh, 120 kilos, um, which is about 19 stone. Um, and I did. I, I, I tickled the weight a little bit. I tickled it a bit, but I'm back beneath now. Um, now I'm feeling good. Um, I kind of, because um, I went back home to um, see my, my family, uh, my parents and that, and my brother. So I, I um, went uh, to a gym back there, trained with some different guys as well, which so actually, it was good for me. It gave me some um, different looks. Fantastic. I want to get on to this massive fight you have, but before that, I want to roll back the years look through your life a little bit. And firstly, I believe that not one, not two, not three, but four people have referred to you as the most handsome man in UK MMA. Is that true? And if so, who are these people? I mean, I don't want to be the, uh, I don't want to be the um, bearer of bad news for other guys, but you know, if four people are saying it, you know, it can't be wrong. Um, <laughs> and I, I and again, naming names feels a little bad, but you know, like it's one of those ones. It absolutely is. I mean, it's a fantastic privilege to be referred to that. But what will be even better will be referred to as an octagon champion, because that's something that could happen in the very near future for you. Obviously, you've got to get through Palace and then Hatif Moel away. So firstly, let's look at the big poll. He's a great matchup for you. Talk me through this fight. Yeah, he's uh, he's big as the word. He is a big old unit. Um, he's probably like six foot six, um, big power puncher. He kicks a lot. Um, his last fight, he showed a bunch of wrestling and um, ground and pound that he's not sort of already shown much before. Um, so, yeah, he's a bit of a handful. Um, to be honest, though, like, I feel like he's kind of a bit of a hammer, you know, like he wants to be the one, you know, putting on them. Um, he's not so he's not so clever on the defensive. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of like, you know, like take it to him a little bit and, and make him make him fight my fight rather than his. Um, but yeah, he is a big old weapon. Most certainly is. It should be a fantastic fight. Assuming you get him, Hatif Moel probably awaits for the heavyweight title, possibly later in the year. We know his story. He was shot in a case of mistaken identity, but he had a very close fight for the Octagon title. I was wondering if you saw that and, you know, do you think you can beat him? Honestly, I didn't even watch it. You know, I heard about it. I didn't even bother watching it because I'd already got Adam as my name. So um, I'm focused on on Adam right now. Um, that said, I think I match up real well against Hatif. Um, obviously, he's a decent guy. His record, you know, speaks for itself. He's a, he's a really solid guy. Um, but I think, like stylistically wise, I actually think he might be an easier matchup for me than um, Adam. Um, I think he looks to you know throw looping shots and try and take you down. And not many people have really had any luck taking me down before. Um, and I think he's kind of like, he's a little bit short for heavyweight. He's a little bit, you know, like swingy. He doesn't really set much up. Um, I just think the matchup's good for me. He's he's a, he's a solid fighter. Um, you don't win the belt otherwise. But that said, I, th I, I think I'll school Hatif. I don't think he'll win a round on me. That's very interesting because if we could do this fight in England, couldn't we? It'd be a massive fight between you and Hatif. And obviously you're very confident you can beat him. But by the sounds of things, we could also do it in Germany because you're a German speaker, aren't you, Stuart? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> I mean, I can. Uh, <laughs> when I was younger, I used to speak a, a little bit because um, I, I am. Uh, my granddad was German. Um, you know, he, he came over I don't know, about eight, eight years ago. You know, if you worked that one out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I, I Germany suits me. Um, I know they have a show in March, which like will be like January, February, March. You know, like straight off the bat um, for the belt. But I would really like to try that because it's actually it's it's where my uh, my mum's family are from. Um, so it'd, it'd be really kind of cool to go go and fight there. Um, and I, you know, like he, he might, you know, he's 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 not a uh, natural born German, you know, like an. I'm, I'm, you know, I've got that that blood in my veins, so that'd be quite fun to do. It'd be quite 
quite a good one. And I have good memories of Germany. You know, I had a, I had a fight there before and it went well. Um, so, yeah, so I think I'd, I'd quite like to fight out there. That said, I've heard they're doing some pretty cool venues uh, later this year in the UK, um, which I definitely want to be involved in. So, uh, so we'll see. Yeah, it'd be fantastic to see you either holding the German flag in Germany or the British flag in England with that belt around your waist. That would be great to see. But your career has been a crazy one, right? Because correct me if I'm wrong, did you have your first seven fights without any MMA training whatsoever? Uh, yeah, I, I had, uh, you know, I had half a dozen fights. Um, like when I when I first started training, I'd, I'd um, got a background in judo. Um, and I, I was pretty good at judo, but look, you know, obviously the grappling is solid. Um, and yeah, me and my brother rocked up and we had, you know, I had a few fights and he had, he had a couple, um, and yeah, just competed a bunch, but it was kind of a different time back then. You know, it was, uh, the, uh, the landscape has changed. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was pretty wild. Like I was only, I think I was, I can't remember, I was 17 or maybe 18 um yeah and we just just wanted to have some fun really it was just because it seemed like a seemed like a fun thing to do um and then eventually i got cracked by somebody um and i was like oh man i better, I better start taking this seriously and you touched on your brother there was he an olympian and what was it like going through that journey with him yeah he um went to 2012 um uh you know like he's uh like i said i started in judo he he carried on with judo he was he, to be honest he kind of led the way for me he's five years older um and you know like he's he's pretty his judo is pretty awesome um and kind of like um it, it for me it was like it, it was kind of surreal because when i was younger I, I finished judo properly when i was about 18 um but my dream you know when i was basically when i from about a few years into judo, from when I was like eight or nine, was to go to the Olympics and, you know, to kind of, you know, that's that's the dream for people competing in judo. Um, and so when I stopped and found, you know, like before I really found MMA, um, it kind of like, it was kind of like the end of what I wanted to, you know, like my whole life's plan. I hadn't worked, thought about a job. I hadn't thought about you know, what I was going to do with, with any of that type of stuff. It was just go to the Olympics. That's the goal, go to the Olympics. So, like, even though I'd fought before, when I kind of stopped judo, you know, in my head, there wasn't really a clear path in UK and May to, to make it as a fighter. Um, so, like, it was kind of like the end of, I was like, what the hell am I going to do? And I kind of stumbled around for, it was only like six, eight months before I, I started training properly and working things out. and. Um, yeah, once I, once I kind of went from there and found judo, then it was kind of like, um, just kind of went, you know, went running from there. Um, but like, so a few years later, when my brother actually started, um, started, um, went to the games, it was absolutely insane. Like, just because it's one of those ones where you, um, you, you kind of see, like, obviously, like, it was his dream as well, but like, it's, you know, my, obviously, I, I, I love my brother so much. And uh, to see him achieve that, um, while you know like in a way it's kind of a reflection of what i didn't do um it was <laughs> crazy emotional it was crazy emotional. um you know like i was like at the same time like really happy for him and just kind of a bit like oh this is you know kind of this was meant to be my path as well um so yes yeah, so it was a bit of a funny one it's amazing obviously he went on his path and did amazingly well you've got on your path and done fantastic things leading to a massive victory in your career over Tom Aspinall. We know how well he's done in his career, winning the UFC interim title. Talk me through that fight. Talk me through the submission and how amazing it is for you to have got that when considering everything he's gone on to do. Yeah, man, it's definitely stood the test of time. Um, it's <laughs> aged very, very nicely. Um, basically, uh, I it was a long time ago. I took, I was, um, I took my first loss in Bellator um, I think I'd you'd gone eight and one at that time. So like I took my first loss. Um, Bellator cut me, uh, and this is like, uh, like basically, you know, it's 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 a pretty pretty hard one. The first L, uh, it, it sucks. Um, came to fight an uh, old UK show called Bama, 
and I will swear blind I got done by the by the judges. It's just is what it is. What can you do? I made I, I fought like an idiot as well, but I still got done by the judges. Um, so I was on a two fight losing streak, and there's this young, you know, like big, strong, up and coming kid who nobody wanted to fight. I've been told a lot of people have turned him down, and in my head at the time, I was just like, um, kind of, kind of in the perspective of just, you know, like I'm losing two. If I lose three in a row, what's the point? If I can't beat some, you know, like some up and coming kid, then like, you know, he's the guy I'm not. So I just went into it kind of a bit gung ho. It's like do or die. Um, and it, you know, like if you watch the fight, it's it's interesting. You know, obviously you can see at that time, you know, his striking, you know, was better than mine. He's super aggressive. Um, I was I was predominantly able to win, you know, out wrestle him um, and win win the grappling exchanges um, until kind of it leads up to the finish. Every, everyone's seen a lot of people have seen the finish, but not the actual fight. Um, basically, <laughs> what what you don't see is. I've I've been ground and pound. I ended up standing up over him. I try to do a Superman punch through his guard from standing to ground. Halfway through this, he goes to up kick me, and I panic and go, "Oh fuck!" Um, <laughs> duck and run. And it, we end up in the weirdest scramble I've ever been in in a fight. And yet, and I end up on top with this giant giant gorilla on top of me, club me in the side of the head. Um, and yeah, like. I essentially pull guard, which is a big no-no, obviously, in MMA. <laughs> it's such a bad idea. <laughs> um, and then managed to get the leg lock. Um, so, yeah, it's a huge win. But, like, it's it's one of those ones, you know, like, from there, Aspinall's, like, you know, like, springboarded from that. He's he's an amazing fighter. You know, he's, his achievements, he's, he's looking like the man at heavyweight. You know, it looks like even John Jones don't want to fight him right now. So, you know, like, I got my little win back then, but I'd... Uh, I don't think he's too worried about me right now. I don't think I'm in his, uh, <laughs> in, his in the equation for him. Well, it'd be great, obviously, if he can go on to win that UFC heavyweight title. You can go on to win that octagon title, and that'd be fantastic for British MMA. But Stuart, thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. I really appreciate it. all the luck in the world for this massive fight that you've got on Newcastle on the 27th. But before I let you go, is there anything else that you would like to discuss? Uh, no, nah, man, I'm good, thank you, appreciate it. Nice to speak to you, James.